Howdy! The next law we're going to look at is of special interest to you as a student because it affects student data and protects the privacy of students. And I should say that in each of these videos, I want to remind you that I'm getting this information from a great analysis done by this law firm, Greenberg Targ, and proper attribution, this is their work. However, since it's on a website and we're using this for educational purposes, I don't think they'd mind. So the Student Data Privacy Act was recently passed based on a model law that is similar to one in at least 14 other states. So do you remember our map that I showed you of the states and how states can be so inconsistent? Many times there'll be in a professional association or an industry association that will come up with a model law for different things and then try to bring some consistency. This is a lot easier on companies that do work in several states, provide services. So what they wanted to do in this law was strike a balance between addressing risk with new types of technology and student data but at the same time, realize the benefits that these digital tools offer. Again, I invite you to read this for yourself. I am just highlighting some key points. Again, notice the code that's going to come out. This is going to be the Texas Educational Code. Previously, we looked at the Texas uh, Cybersecurity Act, which was the Texas Government Code. We looked at the uh, Texas Cybercrime Act, which was the penal code. Now this is the Texas Educational Code. It does some things that makes common sense. We don't want to sell or rent student data, right? We don't want to use data to build a profile for anything other than educational purpose. We want to protect the student's privacy. So we do that, but we've also tried to provide some, this law tries to provide some common sense. You'll also notice that there are certain times that disclosure is authorized by this law. And these are typical standards. For instance, a third party operator or application might commercially disclose to data if there's a legal or regulatory compliance, if there's some reason that they, by a court order or a legitimate government agency, be it state or federal, are needed to release the data or to protect against liability, typically in a lawsuit, or if there's a threat of a lawsuit, then data can be released if to protect the party. To protect the safety and security of a website or application for legitimate educational research purposes. To comply with a request by the state agency, Texas Education Agency, or school district for a purpose with express consent of a student, or to share data solely to provide access to employment, scholarships, or edu their educational opportunities for the student. This all makes good sense. Now, the Student Data Privacy Act uh, limits how the operator can use the data. And they are required to implement and maintain, and there's our favorite cyber word again, reasonable security procedures and practices to protect the student data from unauthorized access, deletion, use, modification, or disclosure, the womb to tomb. And they must delete the data when the school or school district requests that be deleted, again, a good exception, unless the student or student's parent consents to the operator's continued maintenance of the student data for whatever reasons. This is a great law, a privacy law. What I like about this law is that it's based on a model law. So it's some consistency with other states. And it's a good balance between protecting the student's right to privacy for legitimate education purposes. The next law we will look at is the Nuisance Website Act.